Hey, Andrew. First, welcome back to Los Angeles, but officially welcome to the Dodgers. What kind of led to the decision to sign with the Dodgers and what has been communicated to you is what's kind of expected for you next season? Yeah, I, uh, I got the privilege of being on a Zoom um, uh, before, before signing when kind of making a decision. Uh, and they, they had – the Dodgers had everybody on there. They had Mark, Mark Pryor, um, Doc. They had – I mean, really just – there's like seven, eight people I could go through the list. And just getting to talk with those guys, um, getting to understand kind of the process of how they, um, how they do things and how they felt like I could improve um, – the way that they communicated things in that in that call and some of the, the ways that they felt like I could improve um, just to me was uh, really cool. Something that I uh, was really excited about. And then, um, you know, for me, like after the year that I had last year, um, really felt like signing early, getting on a team, getting into a a program and really getting kind of onboarded quickly to have an entire off season um, to kind of start with some of the changes that I, you know, need to make or they want me to make uh, was extremely, um, been, I think will be really beneficial to me. And you mentioned some spaces in which they uh, discussed improvement. Can you share any of those things or anything that uh, you're working on or planning to work on? I don't know. I'm going to have to figure out how much of this is proprietary information. I don't know if I can just go be putting all their stuff on the streets, but uh, yeah, I think just a couple things mechanically, um, you know, and then kind of just getting uh, on their, on their uh, program as far as like off season uh, strength and conditioning. Um, and then just probably some minor tweaks uh, with a few of my pitches, some things that I could do better. Um you know, some things definitely to like be working on uh, in the off season and then, then obviously coming into spring training, how to best deploy those pitches, you know, with pitch selection and pitch, pitch usage and locations. Um, you know, I think all this, I don't think it's one major thing. I think it's just kind of a, uh, a culmination of a lot of little things um, and just something that I think need to get started on sooner than later was, was kind of the, the thought everybody was having. Thank you. Next question is from Rowan Kavner. Go ahead, Rowan. Hey, Andrew, welcome. Uh, just, uh, you know, you talked about some of the, the mechanical tweaks and things that they had kind of talked about. Was that something you wanted to hear from teams as you were kind of making your decision, how they might go about, you know, finding some changes and tweaks with you? Or was that just sort of an added benefit, um, you know, when you were listening to the Dodgers pitch? No, I think that was a, a real part of it for me. Um, I think having a team that has a very clear idea of, of who I am, um, what I can do, um, and how I can achieve that. Um, and being able to work in tandem and have a really good partnership, um, was something that was really important to me. Um, I know that I'm much better than, than my numbers say I was last year. And I think it was really, um, exciting and eye opening to see, I mean, frankly, not just the Dodgers, but how many other teams felt the same way. But at the same time, I wanted to really have a good partnership with whatever team I signed with, with, with a team that believed in what I can be and, and had a, a process in place to help me uh, to help me get there. And then, uh, you know, last year, what, what was your kind of experience like, you know, going to, to New York? And do you feel like you learned anything new from that? Yeah, I mean, frankly, I got traded over and, and I, I just I wasn't pitching well at the time um, and I didn't turn it around. So that's something that, you know, I, I wish um, maybe hadn't gone the way that it did. But I think with any, you know, with any failure and, and in life, like there's always opportunities to learn and grow from it. Um, I'm definitely going to take that opportunity. I, you know, I think on the Yankee side of things, like, you know, I, I think having an entire off season and spring training with an organization like that probably would have helped rather than trying to make some of those adjustments literally on the fly after just getting traded over. Um, you know, so I, I think that there's, you know, there's some things that probably I left on the table there. Um, and that's, like I said, that's one of the reasons why I felt like you know, getting here uh, with the Dodgers and getting going quickly, I think, is the best way to 
really catch up um, up to speed and, and make some changes that I know are going to stick and are going to last throughout the year. Thank you. Yep. Next question is from Dave Vasego. Hey, Dave. Hey, Andrew, uh, speaking of that, as far as getting with the Dodgers, what was the, the strategy with you and your representatives to sign before December with that looming lockout? Was there any consideration to, to do it after, or why did you feel like right now is the best time to sign with the team? Well, I think, I, uh, you know, I had the benefit of, again, unfortunately, after having a not great year, I got DFA'd with a couple days, I mean, really like one day left in the season, basically, an elected free agency that allowed us, um, that allowed us to kind of start talking to teams and, uh, and everything before, before the World Series was over. So I think that was the first and foremost why things happened so quickly. Um, and, you know, I, I I had talked with my guys and just basically said, you know, I really think that like getting on boarded and getting on, on a program with a team, you know, sooner is only going to be more beneficial to me. Um, there really was no consideration as far as any potential lockout is concerned. Um, I think it just sort of happened to work that quickly just because of the situation I was in uh, with being able to talk with teams before all other free agents hit the market. So um if you want to talk more, you know, negotiation strategies, you could, you could talk to my agents, but I just think just from a pure, I thought of it more from a pure baseball standpoint of, you know, having a, a productive off season. When did it get really serious with the Dodgers? You said you were able to speak to teams before the world series was over. Did you guys have conversations during that period of time? And did you feel like it was something that was becoming clear to you then? Yeah, I had quite a few Zooms with a, a few different teams, um, and it was really interesting to see how different teams handled it, how different teams had different people on the calls, um, different, you could say, sales pitch pitches, I mean, however you want to describe it. And I think, you know, there was a few teams that stood out, but really, honestly, the Dodgers was one of the most impressive just from a uh, – just a cohesive, like the way that the unit was so cohesive, um, the way that they really, a lot of the times when guys would talk, they would really almost take the words right out of my mouth uh, with kind of how I was feeling things that, you know, from a baseball standpoint, from a mentality standpoint, I think they really understood where I was at and what I was looking for. Um, and like I said, like, I really want that part. I wanted that partnership with an organization and being able to have that like open and honest communication with them was like really something uh, I was excited about, um, you know, more of a, a collaborative effort. Um, and, and obviously the Dodgers track record speaks for itself. I mean, I didn't really need much of a sales pitch to know where they're coming from and what they can do and what guys in this organization have done before. And so I just uh, am really excited to, to get on, you know, get on the program and get moving and get working as quickly as possible to catch up to speed with, you know, what these other guys have, you know, been doing for, for a couple, you know, a couple years or however many years they've been in this organization. So um, I'm just, I'm excited and ready to go. Thanks, Andrew. Next question is from Mike DiGiovanna. Go ahead. Hey, Andrew, welcome back. What's up, DG? So uh, your signing here has uh, sort of been framed, you know, Dodgers see your upside, bounce back candidate. And we've seen the name of Robbie Ray uh, in a lot of the stories uh, uh, with your signing here. I'm just wondering, what, what do you think of that comparison? Is that realistic? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah. I think it is realistic. I'm not, I'm not sitting here predicting I'm going to go win the Cy Young or anything next year, but I do think that there were teams look at not only just pitchers stuff, but also underlying metrics. I think that's where a lot of teams are um, really trying to, especially in a situation for a guy like me where it is, you know, a bounce back season. I'm, I'm fully admitting the year I had last year is not what I wanted to have. Um, but I do think that there were some things, that I could do a lot better and uh, some, probably some really small things that are going to make big differences. Um, I am very comfortable with an organization like the Dodgers seeing that and understanding that and being able to, you know, communicate with me how they see me making those changes. Um, and, 
I'm not going to, all I can do is, you know, it's super cliche, but all I can do is just really start working this off season to get onboarded and, you know, go into spring training as, as ready as possible to go make one pitch at a time and win games. And I think, if, you know, I don't know Robbie Ray, but if you asked him, I'm sure that he didn't come into this, this last season necessarily expecting to win a Cy Young, but I think that he was just trying to go out there and implement a better, you know, process and game plan. And as it, as it grows, you gain confidence and you start pitching better and, and things just start falling into place. So um, for me, I'm really focused on, you know, the, the task at hand in the near future uh, and just being ready to come into spring training and, uh, you know, and, and try and, uh, you know, kind of, Win, win one pitch, one game at a time. Without getting too proprietary, uh, are the things they're suggesting things you are completely new to you or maybe some things that maybe you'd gotten away from and, and needed to go back to? Anything? Yeah, there's a few things that are pretty new. Um, again, I don't know how much of this is proprietary information, so I'm not going to put their stuff in the streets, but uh, I think just – like I said, I got to go out to LA and I sat down with a couple guys, honestly, for two, three hours at a time, um, really digging deep into some things that I like to do, don't like to do, that I do well, that I could do better. Um, and just really, that was just the baseline kind of conversation. I mean, we haven't even, I haven't even really started ramping up, throwing too much. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm just now getting kind of my off season going. So, um, you know, I think a lot of those things are going to grow and mature, uh, as, as the off season and as spring training kind of comes around. So I'm really excited. I can tell you that like some of the things that they have, I think for me, I think are extremely achievable and things that I had never really thought of little minor tweaks that I had never, um, had never really crossed my mind, um, or had never been brought to my attention. So I'm excited because I think there's some really low hanging fruit, but I also understand some of the things they want me to do, I think are going to be a bit more difficult and some stuff that I'm going to have to really buckle down and like work hard this off season to not just do one or two times, but to be able to consistently do every single time I take them out. So um, it's, it's just really exciting to go into an off season. I mean, this is really frankly my first off season um, with a new team in, in the, you know, in, eight years, nine years. I can't remember how long it's been, but I think just having a little di different focus and a little different mindset and some different um, cues uh, to go into the, into the off season is, is really exciting. Thanks, man. Last one. Last one's from Fabiano. Today. Go ahead. Hey, it's good to see you again. What's up, baby? Um, so this obviously isn't the first time that Andrew Friedman has acquired you before. Uh, what do you sort of remember about that day and how much like, did that relationship sort of develop over the years and how, did it help at all or benefit at all just as you were sort of going into this winter? Uh, frankly, like there wasn't a whole lot of like communication between us last time. Um, it happened. It was a pretty quick turnaround and I think there's always that knowledge that he was there and potentially a part of that decision-making process. Um, but that was so long ago. I think that, you know, things have changed, but maybe, um, maybe some things haven't, uh, you know, I don't really know exactly what goes into their, you know, decision-making process necessarily, but, um, you know, I'm, I, I've gotten to talk to Andrew and he's awesome. Everything, like I said, is just, everybody's super upfront, super honest, really, uh, a collaborative group effort with everybody with the Dodgers. Um, so I'm excited to just see, really just see how they, they, um, you know, how they really implement their game plan um, and, and how it starts kind of unfolding in the, in the, how it takes effect. I'm really excited to get in there and kind of start digging deeper into really some little things once I get, once I get on the, on the, on the path. Thanks, Andrew.